Hello, I'm Rebecca Weber. You're watching Better for America, presented by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now, joining me today is Andy Ogles. He's a freshman congressman representing Tennessee's 5th Congressional District, which is home to nearly 3,000 AMAC members. And we have a great episode coming up right now regarding the Biden administration's war on your home appliances and how it impacts the economy. So stay tuned. The Association of Mature American Citizens is the conservative voice for Americans 50 and older. AMAC is fighting for the values that you hold dear. Join today. Together, we can right the course of America. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, you introduced the Hot Showers Act back in September. I'd like to give you the floor to really explain to our listeners exactly what the Hot Showers Act seeks to accomplish. Yeah, you know, uh, clearly the, the Biden administration has this underlying climate agenda. So first they went out after the, the gas stoves, they came after chocolate milk of all things, but now they're coming after hot showers. And look, you know, I say this in jest, but, or well, in truth, uh, I don't want Joe Biden in my shower. I'm guessing you don't want Joe Biden in your shower, but that's what they're <laughs> seeking to do is, is this regulation, this re regulatory you know, burden they're putting on these manufacturers will make it more expensive to buy a new water heater. And look, you know, at a time when the economy is struggling, uh, when people are living paycheck to paycheck, the average American household has to spend an additional $11,000 just to have the same standard of living. And if you can hear that beeping in the background, that's, uh, that's an indication of Florida activity. I'm actually in Washington, D.C., as you can see, uh, and we're, we're voting today. But, you know, the Biden administration, uh, they're, they're literally going after the hot showers. And so, again, the average American household is struggling paycheck to paycheck. And to make the wa hot water heater something that's essential to all of us, whether it's cleaning your clothes or your dishes or taking a shower, uh, this is an unnecessary burden. It is an unnecessary step. But we've seen across the gamut that the Biden administration has been really out of control by making laws by way of enforcing rules. And so that's an important thing to understand is that Congress is the body that passes laws. We're the legislators, you know, you vote for us, you, you can hold us accountable. But what's happened under the Biden regime is that you have these unelected bureaucrats that are passing rules and literally changing the makeup of our nation. So that could, should concern you as, uh, you know, your audience and your constituents as you're going into retirement, you're thinking about retirement, or maybe you're having to work through what otherwise is your retirement. This regime is really truly affecting your pocketbook in a negative way. So when you talk about these, the hot water heater itself, what is it that they so dislike about um, just an average American having a hot water heater in their home? Well, and, and, you know, in the name of saving the climate, they, they put on these extra you know, requirements on the manufacturer where, where there's no proven evidence that it's necessary. And so, you know, I'm on the financial services committee, um, mm. which is I affectionately call the nerd committee because it deals with the economy and the banking and stock market. But for example, you have these accords that came out of Europe. Uh, it's non-binding, but the Biden administration is trying to require our banks here in the United States of America to adhere to these European standards. Now, what you have to understand about our banking system is here in the U.S., we have a very resilient banking system. We have what you would consider a three-tiered system. So you have the mega banks, the mid-sized regional banks, and your small banks. So there's different levels within the marketplace. So whether you're a small business owner or you're a corporate investor, there's someone or something for you to, to take care of your business. In Europe, they have a very rigid uh, banking system where you typically just have two tiers. Uh, and so, you know, t deposit requirements and, and how they impact the economy is entirely different. But what's most important or scary is these accords that are coming out of Europe. Our two biggest adversaries, Russia and China, have provided input 
as to how banks in Europe should operate. Now keep that in mind for a moment. They don't have a free market economy. They don't have free market banking systems in China and Russia. And so they're devising rules and regulations to hurt the banks and the, the, the free market in Europe. And now the Biden administration is trying to adopt and make us more like Europe under the thumb of the thumb of Russia and China. And that might sound like a little bit conspiracy theory, but it's literally playing out before our eyes where the Biden administration is trying to make us beholden to these unnecessary standards in the banking industry. And so this, this is true with the appliance industry, that they're trying to put in these European standards that are very green energy, carbon neutral nonsense. Look, we have an economy that is teetering, barreling towards $36 trillion in debt. Uh, we've got to get spending under control, but we also have to be energy independent. And Biden is doing anything and everything he can to hurt the energy sector in this hot water rule, uh, your gas stoves, that's all about attacking the oil and gas industry. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything about destroying our oil and gas infrastructure. So uh, this is kind of a nuanced thing when it comes to the hot shower rule, but it, it's a it's death by a thousand cuts when you look at our oil and gas industry. Certainly. And, and people understand that when you impose these regulations, these new requirements on the manufacturer, what they need to do is spend more to comply. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is always passed on to the consumer. Yeah. Uh, so it's the average everyday, uh, you know, American uh, who, who's getting hurt, and as you mentioned, you know, this is in the thousands of dollars more each year that's coming out of your pocket. You know, why aren't they going after, um, you know, Taylor Swift's, you know, jet, uh, you know, fuel guzzling jet that she's taking across the country, um, you know, at a whim? Uh, you know, probably because she's saying the things that make them look good, yeah. <laughs> right? And then what they do behind the curtain is go after the average everyday American who can barely get by today. So, I mean, right. it is so good that you're putting a, sh uh, you know, uh, shining a light on this issue. Now, in your Hot Showers Act proposal video, you reference the climate cartel <laughs> that is running the White House. That's right. Uh, I mean, it, tell us a little bit about who, who makes up this climate cartel. <laughs> well, really, truly, I mean, uh, the, 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 the climate cartel has really uh, infiltrated most agencies and departments uh, across this administration, even to the, to the Army. Uh, you know, the amount of wokeness that is really seeped in to uh, our military into, you know, you have the government trying to force mutual funds to adopt environmental standards. Look, you know, I believe in the free market. So if you are a mutual fund or uh, or maybe you're an investor and you want to invest in green energy or you want to have a product that is heavy in green energy, that the free market will decide on the success of that. But now what you have is the administration saying, well, your mutual funds or your credit cards or your business has to comply with these green energy, these, these socially, you know, so it's ESG, environment, social and governance. And so now they want to say, well, if you're going to really be, you know, uh, in compliance with this score that we're creating, you have to, we want to know how many people, uh, various demographics that you're hiring. And if you don't hire those people, or if you aren't environmentally friendly, we're going to hit you with the score and we're going to penalize you. We're going to restrict your ability to, to do business. And again, this sounds Orwellian, but it's taking place in China. We see these types of scores taking place. So if they don't like uh, you know, the way the things you're saying about the government or maybe you're buying too much milk or too much meat or if you're someone like me that that lives out on, uh, on a farm and we have guns and shoot guns and have ammunition and I bought too much ammo last month, they can literally say, you know what, we're not going to let you buy milk because you bought too much ammo, or we're gonna restrict how much uh, meat that you can buy, all because of the, this ESG score, and they're linking it to, would like to link it to a central bank digital currency. I'm not gonna get, get off into those waters, but you see that this is all about control. At the end of the day, the Biden administration has underpinned the economy. So whether it's gas stoves or the hot waters or things they're doing in other places in the marketplace with mutual funds, et cetera, it's about controlling the American economy, making we the consumer more dependent on the government. Look, I'm a big nerd. I'm a big fan of the founding fathers. They would be, they'd be rolling over in their graves if they could, if they can see what our country's becoming. 
And so we've got to push back. And, and one of the things I will say is that, you know, if, if you hear what I just said over the last few mo- minutes, it may be discouraging. But again, go back to your founding fathers. Think about how they may have been discouraged. They're taking on an, an empire. An empire. They're risking their lives and their fortunes for the purpose of, of starting a nation and, quite frankly, fighting for those inalienable rights, those rights given to us by God, right? And so now... Here we are fighting against a government that's out of control. Don't give up hope because when they were in the trenches, the, the night was darkest before the dawn, but they never gave up. They continued to pray. They continued to believe and they continued to fight. So I came up to Congress. You know, I could make much more money uh, working for uh, the private sector. Uh, we have three beautiful children at home. I, no offense to all of my friends in Congress, but I'd much rather be at home with my family, my beautiful wife and on our farm. But I'm here fighting for the American dream. I'm fighting for your constituents and we want less D.C. in our lives. We want less D.C. in Tennessee. And that's what I'm fighting for. We need we need smaller government. The government right. uh, was made by the people, put in place by the people, for the people, uh, largely uh, for, for defense and protection. Mm-hmm. And today we see the government is involved in every move we make. Um, every day there's more and more and more laws imposed upon people. And we, we, we see that this is how other countries that were once free, um, that, you know, are... are People in power uh, and and control want to ch- fundamentally change the nation. I believe that that's happening before our very eyes. We need to talk more about it. It's the reason why we do this show, and it's it's wonderful to hear you uh, up there, uh, you know, on Capitol Hill fighting on behalf of our God-given freedoms. Now, you mentioned you serve on the House Financial Services Committee. Uh, if you could tell us a little bit about. Um, you know, how the policies that you're fighting for uh, will help, you know, the U.S. economy and how, how they, uh, you know, if we're not, uh, if we don't have good leadership and good people making these decisions, how, how might, uh, if all of this continues, how might this impact our economy into the future if we don't see success? Well, so uh, a good example and, and great question is, you know, think back, you know, uh, Several months ago, roughly a year ago, we had the two big bank fla- failures, one in California, one in New York. And, and so you have these agencies, one of which being the CFPB, uh, you know, the C- Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is an oxymoron because many of the things that they put in place actually hurt the end consumer by, by way of cost and, and restriction of, of access to capital. I'll get to that in a second. But you, so you have these banks that failed. And now they didn't fail because they didn't have enough money. They were not undercapitalized. They were just poorly run. They were poorly managed. And even a layer above that, you have a regulatory regime in both of those states. And not to pick on uh, my friends across the aisle, but they were both blue regimes. So they were regulatory agencies put in place by Biden in blue cities, and they failed to do their job. All the warning signs were there that these banks were in trouble. They, they had poorly managed. They had too much risk on their balance sheet. Uh, and it, they were destined any hiccup in their giddy up, they were going to fail. Forgive me. I'm a Southerner. So that's kind of a Southern term, but anyway, but all that to say is, and so then what you see is these regulatory ag- agencies using that crisis. Your Rahm Emanuel said, never let a crisis go to waste. He was a member of Congress. He was later chief of staff to Obama, but he said, never let a crisis go to waste. And so you have these bank failures. And so now you have the CFP, B talking about increasing the amount of cash or deposits uh, that the banks are going to have on hand. So what does that do? Well, even though there wasn't a rule that took effect, the fact that they were even talking about this requirement, it affected um, your ability to get a loan. So if suddenly you were you're pre-qualified for three hundred thousand and you you were looking at a house, suddenly you realize your bank tells you, well, no, it's not three hundred anymore; it's two seventy. Uh, maybe you're that small business owner and it's time to renew that line of credit. The the bank's like, you know what, we we have to have more cash on hand, so we're not going to give you that loan because we need to hold back just in case the government does something. Uh, or, or maybe you're that small business owner that you rely on capital to make those big purchases, to have the big jobs that you know feed your families and all your employees. The banks are suddenly saying, you know what, we're going to pull back. We're going to lower our risk exposure because we're afraid what the federal government might do. Now, think about 
about that for a moment. We're a free market economy. Uh, you know, our, our founding fathers were risk takers. The you, you think about the the big barons uh, that, that really founded this country and expanded out west and built our infrastructures, they are risk takers. And you have entrepreneurs now afraid to take risks because the government's liable to step in mm -hmm. and drastically affect their business. And what that means for you is suddenly you can't get a loan. Or maybe the loan you can get is not enough to buy your dream home. And so, you know, we live out in the country and what we've seen with the pressure from interest rate risks, when you've seen the, the demand for housing uh, go up, but the supply isn't there, the cost of a home anymore is skyrocketed. So now you have an entire uh, you know, class of individuals that were shooting for that American dream and it's unattainable. The numbers of people now living back home with their parents is at an all time high. The numbers of people that, that are no longer trying to seek a job are at an all time high. So this low uh, unemployment rate is actually a fake number because if you stop looking for a job, then they just take you off the rolls, right? And so the 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 Bidenomics is a sham uh, that's really been detrimental to uh, our economy. And look, you can love Trump, you can not love Trump, but I think we can all agree our economy was better under Trump. The world was a safer place under Trump. You know, Biden post Afghanistan with that that messy withdrawal set the stage for Putin to be bold to say, you know what. America is in a moment of weakness. We're going to go ahead and invade Ukraine. He'd been talking about it for years. I mean, this wasn't a surprise yeah. to anyone. Now you see China versus Taiwan. China is saber rattling, looking at how economically they can take over Taiwan. That's a significant issue because most of the semiconductor chips in the world are made in Taiwan. And so, you know, you look at the ripple effect of failed policies, both domestically and foreign, and we haven't even talked about the southern border yet. And so this administration has been a disaster and we've got to take back this economy. That's right. And, and speaking of the southern border, that is a number one concern to AMAC members. You mentioned never letting a crisis go to waste. Well, it seems, at least to our members, and we poll them regularly, they believe that, that Joe Biden intentionally uh, is, is benefiting or, and intentionally is allowing this border crisis. Uh, I mean, not to mention it's worse than a crisis. Uh, it's a border invasion is what mm -hmm. it is. We've got young people trafficked uh, boys and girls, we've got you know people dying in the tens of thousands of fentanyl to overdose deaths, uh, not to mention, and this is something of great concern to our members, is the fact that, you know, if you're wondering why would Joe Biden be for open borders, well, these illegals are given the opportunity to vote in our federal election. And this is something that a lot of people are not aware of. Essentially, uh, the Department of Motor Vehicle in multiple states is giving that ballot out without proof of ID, without proof of citizenship. They know they're not legal citizens. Um, this is happening. We, AMAC here, has a lot of information that we're looking to expose and to get our grassroots feet on the street to do work on the local level. Uh, you know, in the state level, rather, and of course, but, but, but in your position, sir, when you look at this border crisis, what the average American is hearing is Joe Biden would fix it if only the Republicans would do something. And what, if people are paying attention, they, they, they recognize that the deals are not good deals at all, that the Republicans have been, have been um, asked to, you know, in, you know really uh, take on and go along with that kind of thing. So from from your seat uh, and after years of really you know I'm sure you know understanding what what this means and what the ultimate repercussions are uh, to our economy to our school system to our hospitals and you know families across America crime what needs to happen and, and why isn't more being done and the average American wants to know why the heck can't we get it right yeah, so, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of important things today, but the number one issue facing this country is our southern border and this invasion that Joe Biden has allowed to take place. Keep in mind, no laws of significance have changed when it comes to border security. Uh, but yet, you know, you did not see these numbers under Trump. You did not see these numbers under Obama. So even Obama didn't allow this many people into the country. And so, uh, you know, since Biden has taken office, you have an estimated 8 million people come into our country illegally. Keep in mind, uh, that's larger than the state of Tennessee. We're roughly 7.2, 7.3 million people. 
And so I've been to the southern border. Uh, I went there unannounced. So I flew into Tucson. I went south to the border. I went there with some special forces guys. We were in military vehicles. Uh, they had full armor and with, you know full kits. They had the, the, all of their weapons. We had drones. We had a sniper because we went into the cartel controlled area of the southern border. Now, I want you to think about that for a minute. We're talking about the southern border on the United States side of the fence. So it's U.S. soil and it's actually controlled by the Mexican cartel. And so when I would get out of the, the vehicle, it's so dangerous that mil men in military uniform with body armor, a sniper would go up on the ridge. They would have to pop up a drone. When I got out of the vehicle, they had snipers on the other side get come over the hill to see what I was doing. This is in the United States. This, you know, in the area I was at, it was, this was back in August, there literally had been a firefight between the Mexican cartel and American contractors. And so this is how lawless it's become under the Biden regime. But let's talk about the influx of people. Let's talk about the invasion. I know roughly 60% of women and children that come across that southern border are sexually assaulted. That's part of their price of admission. They have to sell their bodies. They have to give up their bodies to come into this country. And when I say children, I'm talking about two, three, four years old. These animals don't value life in the way you and I do. And so, so I, go to, I go to the southern border. I cross into Mexico. Uh, there's about a 30-foot uh, bluff there. I climb down the bluff. This is in the same area where there was a firefight. As I'm doing this, there's snipers coming over the ridge. But I wanted to see what was in that encampment. It was tree covered. We were out in the desert, very arid. The, the temperature that day was about 115 degrees. But I wanted to see what was down there. And when I get down there, I find clothing, I find blankets, I find food and all sorts of things. But I also found a pack of birth control pill that was part of uh, pills that was bar uh, partially used. Because if you're a woman and you can't afford your travel, they'll give you birth control pills so you don't get pregnant along the ways. They're selling you on your, on your journey. And if you get to this southern border and you haven't fulfilled your obligation, your financial obligation, they then will take you and your birth control pills and they'll take you to a massage parlor, they'll take you to a nail salon, and they'll traffic you until you've paid off your debt. This is what's happening. And so for that reason alone, for the humanitarian uh, crisis that's taking place, for, the, for the, the Christian goodness that is in this country, we should close the border to prevent anyone else from being victimized. But to your point, the Biden administration is intentionally letting these people, roughly 400,000 people a month, 400,000 in a month, because they want to change Texas blue. They want to make sure that Arizona stays blue. And if you think back to this last election cycle, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, those are three very important states. And so if they can invade them with these people who are immediately given phones, they're giving food stamps, they're given welfare, they're given the opportunity to vote in some states, suddenly they have built-in votes for every person that comes in. This is diabolical. It's undermining our republic. Not to mention, it's illegal what they're doing. It's illegal. A recent poll uh, that we send out each week to AMAC members uh, regarding uh, the border and the Supreme Court's decision as it relates to Texas and the wire uh, there that can now be cut. Um, <laughs> Essentially, our members said this is, you know, that what Biden is allowing is, in their view, I speak on behalf of over 2 million AMAC members, is an impeachable offense mm -hmm. uh, because it goes, it, it, it breaks his promise to put him, to protect Americans at its a very fundamental level. So, we, you know, we understand that this is, um, this is not going away anytime soon, and we're just so grateful that you're speaking out on the issue. We, we believe that, that the president could secure the border himself without any bipartisan deal through Congress. Okay. Um, but where do things stand on a potential border deal today? So, so, so and that, that's a good question. So to your point, he could close the border today. With a stroke of a pen, mm -hmm. he could shut down the border. Not another person's coming in. For that matter, not another person could go out. It's that simple. Uh, and their solution, now keep this in mind. I'll think about this for a moment is to allow 1.8 million people to come right. into this country illegally. So their solution to fix the border and to stop, quote unquote, the invasion is to allow almost 2 million people to come in a month illegally or a year illegally. That's not a solution. 
right? Uh, that is perpetuating the problem. That's quite frankly codifying the problem as it is that you're suddenly going to allow 1.8 million people to come into this country illegally every year. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. So the, the Lankford Schumer deal is a Trojan horse. It is amnesty. It is amnesty on steroids, and it will fundamentally destroy this republic in the long term to systematically allow two million people to come into this country. And quite frankly, this is this is a tough conversation. But there's been so many people come here illegally, and a lot of them bad folks. I'm just going to be honest with you. You look well, at the course, cities, you look all. at the crime, yeah. you look at the fentanyl deaths. I mean, you have ODs. I, I spoke in Nashville just the other night before I came to D.C., and, and I've been one of the outspoken voices on this immigration issue, fighting against fentanyl, keeping terrorists from coming here, and we can talk about that in a moment. But the mom, she has a, 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 a kid in college. He makes good grades, and he was at a party, and he, did, he took something. Thing, but it was laced, unbeknownst to him, it was laced in fentanyl. And he spent several weeks in April in a coma. He's now recovered and he's back in school and he's doing well. But this is just an average middle class kid who did something stupid and it almost cost him his life. Now, on the issue of the border and who's coming across, we now know. This is on the record. It's been testified before committee. We now know that we have terror cells operating in the United States of America because of Joe Biden's open border. We now have Iranian assassins operating on our soil in the United States of America with hit lists. This has been testified before Congress. We know that that's true now all because Joe Biden has allowed this border to be invaded. And his solution to uh, fixing it is to allow another 1.8 million. This is a slap in the face to every every victim, families who uh, has had someone murdered by an illegal, every woman that's been sexually assaulted by an illegal, uh, all the crimes, the robberies, the carjackings, the overdose deaths, Biden is culpable in all of those crimes, every one of those that was committed by an illegal. And that's just the fact. And I, I said the other day on video, we put this on social media, if you or I were to go to the southern border and we were to aid and abed, let's just say 12 people. So you and I help 12 people come across this border, our border illegally. You and I would go to prison. But Joe right. Biden helps 8 million people come into this country and there's no consequences except to, to those folks that have been murdered, those women that have been raped, those folks that have been burglarized, those people that have been carjacked, and those families whose kids are dead now because of fentanyl overdose. Uh, this is a hot button issue for me, and quite frankly, it is for America. You have blue cities like Chicago and New York saying, please do something about the border. You have the mayor, I think it was Dallas, who said, you know what, I'm no longer a Democrat because the Democrat party's abandoned my city. I'm now a Republican. This is a bipartisan issue. It doesn't matter if you're red or blue or independent, whether you're white or black or brown or purple. This is affecting everybody across all spectrums, and we've got to get our border under control. And I would argue a sovereign nation has a strong military. We have open, honest, fair elections, and we have secure and sovereign borders. And there's a lot of people that would argue that on any given day, we don't check any of those three boxes right now. Yeah, I, I think that the um, average, you know, blue dog Democrat is is standing with us on this issue. More and more Americans are saying enough, uh, and we see that. It's not a you know Republican-Democrat issue. It shouldn't be. That's it right. should be a moral issue. When I just think of the children alone, Congressman, that is all we should need to say we've got to act when we know that there are tens of thousands of missing children uh, that the government, our government, allows in and does very little, nearly nothing to ensure their safety. Uh, this is, there's blood on their hands and, and something's got to change. Uh, you mentioned the Langford bill and it being sort of a Trojan horse. Um, tell us a little bit more about that because our listeners, you know, again, they, they think that there's a solution, may not be peeling back the, the onion and looking at the details. And then how does that speak to the morale within the Republican Party? Yeah, so, you know, uh, we haven't seen the, the, uh, the, the text itself, but what we understand from our allies in the Senate, you know, I'm close to Ted Cruz and Mike Lee, you know, the Senator Scott, you know, those hard, you know, true, true folks, uh, conservatives fighting for our republic, um, is that it's creating a new classification. 
uh, and it's an expedited process. So if you come in here, you're claiming asylum, there's going to be a new classification. It will be ex expedited. So, so let me back up. So what happens now is you come in, you claim asylum, they give you a court date that's literally years uh, into the future. Most people aren't going to show up. We know that. But now what they're going to do is have a new classification and you're going to have an expedited uh, process and then boom, you'll be labeled. Well, here's the issue. Anyone who, who achieves that classification, which has a low threshold, it's expedited, you won't be able to be deported. So what you're doing is granting all of these people a status within the United right. States of America. And quite frankly, what we're going to have to do is at some point, you are going to have to selectively start deporting people. You know, this is our country. You know, bring me your huddled masses, if you will. But we get to decide who those huddled masses are. You know, my wife's grandmother came here from Honduras as a little girl through the port of New Orleans. She came here legally. I, I, I'm for legal immigration, but I'm not for this invasion that's taking place. And so my family, my children is the, is a product of a legal uh, immigration. And if you see my children, they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. Obviously, I'm biased. So again, I have a compassionate heart. Uh, I would love to go back to uh, Utila and see uh, my wife's grandmother's uh, where she grew up, et cetera. But all that to say is we can't allow this country to be invaded, not for compassionate reasons, not for any other reason. And we know that there's bad people coming here. We've literally caught people with bombs on our southern border. We've caught terrorists on our southern border. We now know there's terror cells operating in the United States of America. We have Iranian assassins that we know have made it across the border. The world is a, a more dangerous place because of this administration. And unfortunately, our country is a more dangerous a pl a place because of this administration. And with fentanyl loose on the streets, so are our playgrounds. Yeah. Very well said. Congressman, before we let you run, you're there on Capitol Hill. Tell us a little bit about what's happening this week. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we, we passed uh, a little bit of legislation. Right now they're working on, uh, this is one of those nerdy pieces of legislation. It fixes part of the tax code. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of junk in it that's actually not good. And so even though you need, there are some very important uh, fixes to the IRS tax code that need to take place. They're actually very timely. Uh, what tends to happen up here in Washington, D.C., it's kind of like, uh, you know, I, may, I would make it akin to a Christmas tree that your five, three and two year old children uh, decorate. You know, you know, you're, you're decorating the Christmas tree and you put all the pretty ornaments on there and it's exactly the way it should be. And then your kids come along and they hang all the other stuff. Right. And so unfortunately, in Washington, D.C., you end up with this Christmas tree uh, and they put all of this junk on top of it in order mm -hmm. to get it passed. And so uh, there's literally tax breaks for illegals. So if you're here illegally, uh, uh, you would be eligible for a tax refund. Now think about that for a second. I mean, you have people who came to this country, they're here in violation of our law. Uh, they may or may not have a legitimate social security number, and yet they're going to be able to get some sort of tax refund. It, it is moronic that that is even being proposed, but that's in this package. You know, Congressman, thank you for pointing that out. We here at AMAC are digging into that, and certainly that is so true. More tax breaks for illegals, especially those who have children. Uh, they may be illegal, but if their children are here and have citizenship, we're doling out more and more and more money. Uh, all of that takes away from Americans who have been working hard, paying taxes through their entire lifetime or as long as they've been working. Uh, and, and it also puts an incredible strain on the school system. So thank you so much for you know fighting back and for working with your colleagues across the aisle to bring uh, light and uh, to the truth. Congressman, thank you again for being here. God bless you and thank, thank you for what you do. Thank you and God bless. For everyone out there listening, be sure to like and share this video and others with your friends and family. Don't forget to join or renew your AMAC membership. There is strength in numbers. God bless you, everyone, and have a beautiful day. Does social engineering from leftist corporations make you feel like we're living in the twilight zone? If so, you're not alone. And that's why we're proud to stand behind a wireless company who stands behind your values. I'm talking about Pure Talk, an AMAC supported wireless company on the nation's largest 5G at half the cost of the big three. So I challenge you to stand with a company who champions your values. Those of you who have always had your neighbors back, 
you've pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps, and you still believe that the flag stands for freedom. It's time to join the masses who have fled their old wireless companies for something better, Pure Talk. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network for half the price of the other guys with unlimited plans starting at just $20 a month. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. And as an exclusive AMAC partner, Pure Talk will give you three years free on your AMAC subscription. Just dial 844-8-PURE-TALK and mention AMAC podcast to make the switch. That's 844-8-PURE-TALK, and make sure to mention AMAC Podcast to get three years free on your AMAC subscription.